Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and in this video we have Flight 5 in which I'm going to be flying from Boston Logan International Airport to Halifax in a Coronado Embraer Phenom. So Embraer Phenom from the publisher Coronado so there's a payware plane, a cute spiffy, spiffy plane that I got on sale at some point and I just like this sort of thing. They look cute to me. So anyway uh, we're gonna be flying this while listening to the Apollo 12 audio as we have been doing and when we last left the Apollo 12 mission they had checked out the LEM twice uh, the second time because there was uh, electrical anomaly with it consuming more power than it was supposed to and that was because of a light that uh, stuck on instead of turning off pr appropriately uh, but of course they have been having all sorts of interesting little problems uh, because they have been struck by lightning uh, during launch and that will continue to be the case. Uh, they still hadn't resolved the propellant um, propellant gauge issue as well as the event timer on the front panel and there will be other interesting things. So let's get going. Let me uh, press play on the audio and we will start. Uh, Houston, this is uh, Blueberry. It's been a minute battery right now, and uh, it's gone way down to, to zero. It's up to three volts. Started. Dr. 12? No takeoff. Left. Okay, Houston, uh, at uh, 1224, it says here in our flight plan, it will be full frame for a 500 millimeter. We have it out, and uh, I presume that that time is Okay, hold on. It's a bit loud. That's a bit better. I still think it's a bit loud, though. Okay. Can't have it uh, obscuring the audio. Pete, those values of the uh, F stops you just questioned look good. That's uh, F11 for the Earth, F8 uh, for the Moon. Those are camera settings. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, the uh, country and western style music uh, which predominated uh, at least a goodly segment uh, that laid down uh, by it through uh, courtesy of Commander uh, Pete Conrad, Commander Conrad being an acknowledged uh, country and western music fan. The music came to us uh, from their tape cassettes aboard the spacecraft. At uh, 12 hours uh, 27 minutes, uh, our digital displays now show Apollo 12 at uh, 58,586 nautical miles above the Earth. Its uh, velocity uh, continuing its uh, steady decrease, uh, now reading 7,404 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. I'm glad they made it clear who we had to blame for the country and western music. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 12 hours uh, 51 minutes uh, now into the flight. Our uh, displays currently show the Apollo 12 spacecraft at uh, 60,257 nautical miles in altitude. Uh, current velocity reading uh, 7,269 uh, feet per second. We'll play. Uh, that tape accumulated uh, since our last report at uh, this time.
Maybe I should skip this, because... Yeah. Just in case. I don't want to get in trouble. Well, um, we suggest, uh, Dick, that maybe you continue scurrying around there. Oh, you're really hard at it today, aren't you? Okay. Oh god. Okay, okay. That earth for you is really gonna be something weird coming back, Houston, when you only got about a just a little bitty sliver of the earth because like I said earlier, you just can't see anything in the black. Okay, well we had that eclipse in about five hours, I guess the earth's gonna completely disappear. Roger, I'll copy. You see uh, Australia coming up over the over by the edge? Uh, sort of do. Uh, it's difficult to tell uh, unless the ground is has a pretty good contrast to the uh, to the water. And I can see some red over there. And uh, I'm not really sure whether that's Australia or exactly what it is. Makes you wish you'd studied your geometry harder in high school or something. Nope, tape issue. This is Apollo Control Houston. More music uh, from the Apollo 12 spacecraft. No, please don't. We heard... Uh, oh, okay, he's just talking about what happened before. Both uh, Dick Gordon and um, Al Bean during this transmission. That was Al uh, talking about uh, the Earth once again and referring to a, a, an earlier conversation. We've... Uh, Picked up the crew uh, again, and uh, we'll switch th to that uh, transmission live. Uh, what is it saying there? Engine exceedance. So oh, okay. Got a good wind this time, too? Oh, it's about uh, the 8 o'clock position. Uh, with respect to the Terminator there in the Pacific. Pete's using the binocular right now, and uh, what do you say, Pete? Oh yeah, but, she's uh, picky no about the sink rate. Cover out in the Pacific, except right off the uh, north east coast of Australia. That uh, I really haven't found any islands yet, but I'm sort of scanning for them now. Roger. This may be mildly irritating with uh, Betty going on about the sink rate at 30,000 feet. I think she doesn't like it if it's lower than like 2400 FPM. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 12 hours uh, 58 minutes now into the flight. Uh, we'll take the line down at this time uh, and uh, pick back up as uh, mission progresses. We uh, currently show an altitude rating of uh, 60,684 nautical miles above the Earth. The velocity now uh, shows uh, 7,236 uh, feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston.
to our left is the coast of, uh, well, New Hampshire right now, but soon it'll be Maine. We'll be departing the coast, though, to make a straighter line to Halifax. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 13 hours uh, 22 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12 uh, now 60,373 nautical miles above the Earth. Our uh, display uh, currently shows a velocity reading uh, 7,107 uh, feet per second as uh, the spacecraft steadily slows down. For the past uh, several minutes, uh, We've had a, in the Mission Control Center, had a replay of uh, the uh, translunar injection where uh, observing the television monitors uh, may have noted uh, the, the uh, world map uh, was briefly taken down. Uh, this was done at the request of gui the guidance officer who was analyzing the data which uh, had been received only a short while ago from Hawaii. Uh, we have several minutes of tape uh, to play back to you, uh, conversations uh, between our capsule communicator, uh, Ed Gibson, and uh, the crew of Apollo 12. We'll play those tapes at uh, this time. You can go ahead. Roger, you've been plotting this uh, PTC on the ball. How's it looking? Roger, Dick, we've been watching it. Uh, stand by. We've been looking at your uh, trace here, and it looks as though you're up to around 27 degrees now. You're just sort of pigtailing out. What gave you uh, a large excursion was the wastewater dump. It looks as though you'll be heading back in. You won't really significantly improve. That is, you won't really get the uh, alignment right, right down close to zero or at the rate you're going, but you'll probably stay within 30 degrees, so uh, just hold uh, what you got. Unfortunately, this map, every time it loads a chunk, it takes a bit of time and pauses the game, so I'm not too sure how I feel about it. Apollo 12, Houston, we have a, some P-37 pads for uh, liftoff 25, 35, 45, and 60, when you're ready to copy. Also, the display okay, numbers in general are really small. Is he himself finding the pad at this time, and he'll be ready to copy in just a minute. Roger. P-37 block data, 0250-4227, minus 169er, 07412, 0350-6327, minus 166-07339er, 0450-49017-168-09758. It's got some of these interesting zero features six, here. Zero, zero, oh, it's zero, got its own volume control too. 4496-168-09758. Did Al read back? Okay, uh, the last one I got before we lost S band there with you was the 122. And I didn't copy the last part, GET 400K. Okay, okay GET at 400K was 12201. Okay, we back, fellas. 02500 42. Oops. Can sort of hear him.
And they're probably gonna have to repeat this. Oh, I don't know what that was just doing. This is going a nice clip. I'm at my uh, sort of usual 35,000 feet. Let's try and stabilize here. But uh, ground speed is 548 knots. And that's thanks to the 100 knot wind now pushing us in the right direction. Let's try and stabilize here. But I don't want to irritate Betty by suddenly going down too much either. Okay, I'll go ahead with your read back. Uh, after uh, 02500, we pretty much lost all of it. Uh, okay, I'll start to do. 02500, 4227, minus 169. It's a bit hard to trim here. 0 Sorry for the lack of scenery on this flight, but I could have I could have stuck closer to coast. Again. Dick, we'd like to go ahead and uh, close the uh, battery manifold, but uh, continue charging battery B. Okay. Let's see if we can get this past 600 knots with thanks to the wind. Would be nice. See how quickly we can do this trip. Dick, we uh, estimate another 30 to 45 minutes for uh, charging uh, battery Bravo. Okay. I mean, hopefully the yellow zone is not too bad. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, the uh, long on the speed, I mean. Numbers exchanged between uh, Capcom Ed Gibson and Alan oh, Bean oh, aboard the oh, spacecraft oh, oh. for the. Uh, uh, represented the P-37 pad. Uh, P-37 is a return to Earth uh, computer program. The uh, numbers identified as 25, uh, 35, 45, and 60 are plus times in hours from liftoff. At uh, 13 hours, uh, 31 minutes into the flight, uh, we now show Apollo 12 uh, with an altitude of uh, 62,957 nautical miles. Its velocity now reads uh, 7,064 feet per second. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Again, I'm not using autopilot pilot during this trip, at, uh, well, so far, unless it becomes unavoidable, but so far, not using it. So, and this plane is a little bit difficult to trim properly. As you can tell, I'm just moving this to trim by Apollo one notch Control up and Houston down here. At, uh, 14 hours, 2 minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo 12. Our displays currently show Apollo 12 at uh, 65,000 Guess I could use this uh, directly. ...nautical miles above the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 6,900, uh, 11 feet per second. 
here in the Mission Control Center, we're in the process of uh, having a uh, pass over uh, between shifts. Uh, Cliff Charlesworth, the flight director uh, of the Green Shift, is now in the Control Center and uh, going over uh, the status of Pete Frank's shift with uh, flight director Pete Frank. Uh, they will be coming on shortly. Meanwhile, we have approximately one minute of tape, uh, which we will play for you now. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello. Dick, you can go ahead and uh, stop charging uh, battery bomb Bravo and start on battery Alpha. If you go ahead and charge that until you uh, hit the sleep period, you'll be able to get 60% of the charge back in. Okay, we're going to go off bat B and start charging bat A. Roger. Surprised they seem to have lost so much on the batteries. The main point where the batteries are used is during re-entry. During re-entry, they have already ditched the service module with its fuel cells, so they have to rely on the batteries. This is Apollo Control uh, Houston at uh, 14 hours, uh, 4 minutes, down to the flight of Apollo 12. Using this trim method is a little bit better, but I still think it's gonna bother me about the sink rate here. I want to get down lower than 37,000. We'll see. I need to slow down. It's all water right now. There's some distant land there. That's Maine still. Once we get to Nova Scotia, we'll be able to see some scenery. Hopefully good scenery. I think there's mostly a composite hull thing, so there's not too many rivets and such. This is Apollo Control. 15 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12 presently 69,010 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 6,639 feet per second. Crew of Apollo 12 at this time are running what they call Program 23 exercises, it says lunar navigation, in which the included angle between the star and either the near Earth horizon or the far Earth horizon is measured. The onboard computer has stored data on these stars. They're part of the 35 uh, navigational stars used in the Apollo program. The techniques used are actually extensions, uh, more sophisticated versions of the celestial navigation techniques, which for centuries, mariners have been using to locate their position on Earth. But in this case, there's a third dimension added to space or depth. We have approximately five minutes accumulated tape from the crew and the recent exchanges between spacecraft communicator Don Lynn here in Mission Control Center. We'll run this tape by now. Oops. Uh, Roger, we're uh, sort of suggesting here that when you uh, terminate your PTC, uh, you go directly to your uh, P-23 Sort of suggesting. In the flight plan, uh, to do your uh, P-52, there should oh. be good stars there, and it'll be We'll let it correct, we'll let it correct. Okay. Oh, all right, all right, all right. That's the uh, P-23 optics channel. The uh, roll is 204, pitch 262 in Yaw Zero. Okay. And yeah, welcome aboard, John. Yeah. 
you certainly had an exciting one this morning. Yes, it's recurring in our conversation throughout the day today. <laughs> they keep talking about the lightning strike. Well, one would. That's... Uh, that's primitive. We saw lightning coming uh, right down your plume, right to the ground. <laughs> well, that sure confirms it. Are you, are you kidding me or not? That's some of the reports we've been getting back. I believe it. I keep telling you, you don't fly through thunderstorms. <laughs> I'm wondering why they write that in all the handbooks. They can write that in the Saturn V handbook now. It's tough to trim this. Even using this method with the middle mouse button on the trim there. Ah, yeah, that's going up a lot. This seems finer control than my normal trim, but still. You can go. You know these marks are going to be good. Get your chance and use this iPad this trip. Roger. Well, close to 600 knots. Golf ball now. Should be a pretty impressive view from that altitude. Was a grapefruit or volleyball before? Apollo 12, would you select on the Alpha, please? Roger. Uh, Houston, say again. Roger, we were watching the signal strike that didn't seem to affect it much. We're anticipating. Okay. Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate. Say, uh, Houston, well... Go. Our pickup here is put the uh, star in the lamp. If you got a couple of stars in this attitude, it would not have blockage by the lamp. Stand by. Yeah, that's sort of important. It's uh, sort of tough for them to look. Apollo 12, it looks like you uh, beat the computer down here. Procyon and Rigel are the ones that uh, we're recommending. Uh, 16 Procyon and 12 Rigel. Yeah, I mean, look for stars because the limb is right in front of the okay, command module, uh, blocking the way. Not completely blocking the way, obviously, but uh, just certain angles. We're more than halfway through the flight. It looks like you've got a pretty good platform up there. Uh, since the last P-52, you had uh, you show about a 1.4 MAU drift in Z, and the other two axes are better than that. So we're uh, quite pleased Oops. with that down here. Also, we would like you to confirm the uh, position of your uh, SCE power switch. SCE power is a normal. <laughs> normal, Roger. Uh, not nominal, normal. This is Apollo Control. That concludes the playback of accumulated voice tape. We're now at uh, 15 hours, 15 minutes, around elapsed time.
still uh, a little over two hours until the schedule rest period begins for the crew of Apollo 12. However, it's likely they will uh, sack out a bit earlier than that. It's about time. They still have uh, their evening meal before they go into the 10 hour rest period and uh, resume the passive thermal control mode, which also known as the barbecue mode, in which they revolve at about three revolutions an hour to stabilize the thermal response of the spacecraft to the alternate heating of the sun. At 15 hours, 16 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. We are approaching Nova Scotia now. A little bit tough to see under the clouds. I don't actually have a Learjet. That's an interesting thing. The plane that uh, that um, Pete Conrad flew this around is the Apollo world. Apollo Control, 16 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12, now 72,989 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity, 6,383 feet per second. We have some tape accumulated, and at the present time, uh, spacecraft communicator Don Lind is discussing uh, an earlier start of the sleep period after they complete the pre-sleep checklist and uh, their last meal of the day. We'll uh, roll the tape and then uh, join any live conversation if it's still taking place at that time when the tape is completed. Let's hear the tape. Now, of course, the Learjet was a common plane in Flight Sim, Microsoft Flight Sim. I think in all versions. Oh, not again. Go ahead. Whoa. Seems the light going up. It's the uh, CSM fire to the P-23. Up, 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 uh. Apollo 12, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston. Uh, Roger, it looks like we're ready for PTC now, and when you start the maneuver, we would uh, suggest the uh, Omni Bravo. got an up uh, link to the gyro drift uh, whenever you can give us the computer. It's all yours. Thank you. Well, since it gets upset if I go down too quickly, I should probably start descending earlier rather than later. Apollo 12, the uh, computer is yours again. Thank you. And we're ahead of schedule anyway. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we're finished with the computer, it's yours again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is Houston 12, did you call? Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate. 
Interesting oh, effect well, going on. Well, it's definitely an effect going on. Don't know why it's going on. Uh, Roger, we wanted to uh, make a couple of suggestions uh, for you before you uh, settle down for the night, and we wanted to leave that up to your option uh, uh, when you want to uh, go to sleep after you eat. Uh, uh, and a couple of items before uh, we wanted to remind you of uh, that you will have to include before you settle down for the night. First one is that the H2 tank, both one and two, we are over land uh, early. Terminate the uh, battery charge, and you'd uh, change the lithium hydroxide canister. Oh, jeez. And then we wanted to leave it up to you when you wanted to uh, terminate your activity today. I wonder if this turns her off. Well, no, it turns everything off. Roger, that's fine with us, and we can understand that you might want a like to sleep. In case I was not clear on that, we uh, suggest that you go uh, with the heaters to auto after you finish the pre-sleep checklist. Okay, H2 heaters to auto after pre-sleep checklist. Roger, roger. Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, this is Apollo rate, Control. Sink rate, sink rate, that sink completes rate. the most recent uh, exchange between the spacecraft communicator and the crew of Apollo 12 who at this time are settling in for the night and likely will begin their sleep period somewhat early. At 16 hours 14 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. I wonder why there's stuff being generated all the way far forward. Maybe there's an update to this plane. I imagine that's supposed to be back here somewhere uh, at the trailing edge of the wing maybe. Uh, I think it's probably the trailing edge of the wing. I can't imagine why it's that far in front. Okay, alright, alright, jeez. Honestly. This is Apollo Control. The engine plumes are separate things. Ground elapsed time. Apollo 12 presently is 76,579 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now 6,166 feet per second, continuing to decelerate as we approach the midpoint in the gravispheres between the Moon and the Earth. We have an accumulation of tape uh, some sink few rate, seconds, sink uh, sink rate, which the uh, rate, crew of Apollo 12 rate, has been discussing rate, uh, some of the last housekeeping problems prior to entering the sleep period. We'll uh, replay this these conversations at this time. You guys calling Houston? Not us. You must be talking to somebody strange now. Okay, okay, stop that. Who's playing around? Apollo 12, Houston. <laughs> Apollo 
Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, listen, those transmissions you uh, thought you heard a couple of minutes ago were us running some keying checks. We didn't think they were getting out, but apparently a couple of them did. So uh, apparently nobody is up there flying with you. Okay, very good. Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, Apollo 12. Sink rate, sink rate. Sink rate. How about an email recap? We're all ready. Unfortunately, it seems some people take these comments seriously about people flying out there with them. Uh, oh well. Apollo 12, uh, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, could you give us that dump again? We switched bit rate on you in the middle and fouled ourselves up. Coming at you. Thank you. So yeah, the ground is independently keeping track of the usage of the propellant. Like they're independently keeping track of many things. So even though the gauge inside the spacecraft isn't working, they can figure it out from other stuff. I go. Roger, did you get my last request? Yeah, we're uh, we're trying to work those out. Uh, the RCS uh, consumables. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, we're working on it. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, I've got your uh, RCS uh, propellant for you. Uh, the total now we can is, see some uh, land. 83.2%. Alpha is 80.5, Bravo is 85.3, Charlie is 81.4, Delta is 85.4, that's the status as of about two minutes ago, and also we got your uh, D-dump uh, successfully. Not perfect. Roger. This is Apollo Control. That brings us up to speed with the uh, accumulated tape conversations. Apollo 12 now uh, some 76,872 nautical miles. And while we watch the display, it jumped to 76,884 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity Continuing to decelerate now 6,148.5 feet per second. Total vehicle weight in earth pounds 96,440. Extending a line outward from the earth to the position of uh, Apollo 12 is presently directly over the equator, just north of the island of New Guinea, more specifically north of West Erion, uh, at uh, 76,000 miles out. At 17 hours, 14 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control.
I think we're mainly going to get PAO updates from here on out. Well, there might be this one is more. Apollo Control, 17 hours, 38 minutes, ground elapsed time. From the crew, I mean. The crew of Apollo 12 completed their pre-sleep checklist at about 17 hours, 19 minutes, ground elapsed time. And uh, we're finally tucked in for the night by okay. spacecraft communicator Don Lind. We have a uh, few minutes of air-to-ground conversation on tape during this final conversation before the 10-hour rest period. We'll listen to that now. Uh, The clouds are really shading the ground. We can't really see too much. I do have photo scenery here too. Can't really appreciate it very much. We need a pile bat readout from you if we could. We'd also like to get a LIM command module delta P reading and a confirmation that the heaters are on auto, the cryo heaters. Okay, the heaters are on auto, bat C37.1, pyro bat A37.2, pyro bat B37.2, and uh, the map the CSF Delta P is plus point four. Roger, we got it all. Thanks very much, and have a pleasant night, please. Okay, so now we should have the sleep period updates that the PAOs do every hour or so. And maybe I'll be landing before they officially start the new day. That would be good timing. But I don't know how long it's going to take me to actually land here.
still wonder about this cloud shrinking phenomena where they randomly shrink themselves. Like that. Strange. Well, we're, uh... What day is this we're about to start over? Doesn't really say. But we are approaching Halifax. This is Apollo Control. 20 hours, 16 minutes. Ground elapsed time. Crew of Apollo 12 still apparently asleep at this time. Some 7 hours, 43 minutes remaining in the sleep period. Spacecraft now 87,149 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 5,592 feet per second. Space Flight Meteorology Group of the Weather Bureau said this morning that weather conditions in the planned landing areas are expected to be satisfactory for the next four days. Ocean areas of concern should have partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Well, who cares about the next four days? Knots, They're not going to be back feet. in the next four days. Temperatures in the Atlantic area in the upper 70s and temperatures in the Pacific area in the mid 80s. Isolated showers in the Atlantic area and widely scattered showers in the Pacific area. Oh, did they go again contracting? And at 20 hours, 17 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Island below us right now is Big Tancook this is Island. Apollo Control at Oop. 22 hours, 18 minutes Weird. into the mission. Apollo 12 crew still asleep. We show five hours, 41 minutes remaining in this rest period. All systems continue to function satisfactorily. Apollo 12 is 127,851 nautical miles from Earth traveling at a velocity of 4,039 feet per second. The flight controller team, led by flight director Jerry Griffin, has taken over here in the control center. This is Mission Control, Houston. Doing the night shift must have been real rough on those PAOs. It's not like they were doing a whole lot. This is Apollo Control at 22 hours, 27 minutes. Uh, we have a correction on the last figures past the distance and velocity. Those figures were moon referenced figures, not earth referenced. The uh, present earth reference distance 93,351 nautical miles, velocity 5,292 feet per second. Previous figures were referenced from the moon. how this whole cloud thing works where if you tilt the camera this is they are different. Control at 23 hours 18 minutes. Crew still has 4 hours 41 minutes remaining in its rest period. Well, the flight controllers here are at this time reviewing a playback of yesterday's television uh, mission. Apollo 12 is 96,000 456 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 5,149 feet per second. 
Apollo 12 will be equal distance between the Earth and the Moon at an elapsed time of 29 hours, 16 minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, the uh, distance to uh, both bodies from the spacecraft will be 112,899 nautical miles at that time. And the Capcom uh, on this shift is astronaut Paul Weitz, who has relieved astronaut Don Lind. This is Mission Control Houston at 23 hours, 19 minutes. Seems like a few of these Capcoms, I think, worked with uh, Al Bean and P. Conrad on the Skylab project later on. Uh, P. Conrad commanded Sky the first Skylab uh, crewed mission, and then Al Bean commanded the second. Some of these names sound familiar from that uh, that program. I'd have to double check though. This is Apollo Control at 24 hours 18 minutes into the mission. Three hours and 41 minutes remain in the sleep period for the Apollo 12 crew. Apollo 12 is 99,360 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity is 5,020 feet per second. Total weight of uh, Apollo 12, uh, 96,869 pounds. The flight dynamics officer using uh, data gathered from the last look at the S-4B has uh, predicted its trajectory. This will be the last update on this predicted trajectory for the third stage of the booster. Its closest approach to the moon will be 3,091 nautical miles. Its velocity at that time will be 4,934 feet per second. And the elapsed time at which it reaches this closest approach is 85 hours, 48 minutes, 4 seconds. This is Halifax. The S4B is then expected to go on into a solar orbit. This is Mission Control Houston at 24 hours, 19 minutes. And on the opposite side of the bay from Halifax, which is on the western side, or southwest, on the opposite side is Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So we're actually currently over Dartmouth, having passed Halifax. Oh, she's all sorts of fun. I just checked, and Paul White's the current Capcom uh, did work with uh, P. Conrad on the Sky, uh, P. Conrad's Skylab mission, the one that had to rescue Skylab. This is Apollo Control at 25 hours 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 102,203 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,898 feet per second. The Apollo 12 crew still has two hours, 41 minutes uh, remaining in their sleep period. Sink rate, sink rate, sink the TB5 clock uh, that shows on the monitors in the news center is counting from zero Greenwich Mean Time on launch day. Some of the flight controllers, primarily the flight dynamics officers, use this uh, time reference uh, in some of their calculations. It's counting from zero Greenwich Mean Time on launch day. We are projecting now a time for uh, arrival at the lunar sphere of influence of 68 hours, 30 minutes, 22 seconds. This is Mission Control Houston at 25 hours, 19 minutes elapsed time.
Okay, so approaching Halifax Stanfield International Airport, which is pretty far out from Halifax itself, by the way. I wonder if it's got proper air brakes. Uh, I don't see anything resembling an air brake. I just press the button. This is Apollo Control at 26 hours 18 so minutes. So I'm gonna guess no. Apollo 12 is 104,983 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 4,782 feet per second. Apollo 12 crew still has one hour 41 minutes remaining in its sleep period. All systems on the uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft continuing to perform in a normal manner. This is Mission Control, Houston. All right, we're uh, right in line right now if we wanted to. Uh, I don't know if we can go down fast enough without this thing chirping at me. Sink rate, sink rate, <laughs> sink rate, sink rate, sink rate. Maybe I should just ignore her. This is Apollo Control at 27 hours 18 minutes. We are pretty darn close. Apollo though. 12 is 107,698 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,672 feet per second. And we will wake up the crew. I oh, don't know. This isn't exactly a shuttle. From now. All systems continuing as much as I would like it to be. No problems. The crew wake up in a 41 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't we? Well, why don't we just do a normal go around? This is Apollo Control at 27 hours 54 minutes. Pete Conrad has beaten us to the punch by about uh, five or six minutes. Just as Flight Director Jerry here, uh, Pete is putting in a call. Just as uh, Jerry Griffin is asking the Capcom Paul Whites to put in a call to him. We'll listen. Well, beat me to it too. I was trying to land before they started the new day. Those are radiation readings, cumulative. Uh, Don't sink. 
Don't All right, this time I'll take you seriously. Don't sink. Don't sink. Well, suddenly we have a lot of clouds. Could be parallel to runway now. Well, can't see a whole lot from that one. Don't sink. I wasn't trying to. Oh, there's some hint of trees down there. Okay, hold on. See stuff. It's not pleasant. Well, Houston, uh, ready with your morning newscast if you are. I think the stall speed of this is 100 knots without the flaps. Okay, whoever answered me that time uh, was way down in the mud and hardly readable. Uh, World I should probably do an instrument flight well. rules sort of thing, but Soviet Union hailed the crew as I've got a map. Toss, the official Soviet news agency reported the start of the mission and a brief factual report in both of its Russian and foreign language reports. Got more than one map, actually. Czechoslovak television carried a live coverage of the liftoff. Really an explanation of technical detail. In West Germany, all radio and television networks carried the launch live, as did the Japanese broadcasting company. The launch is being described with such adjectives as spooky and cliffhanging. <laughs> Even President Nixon, a one-time Navy man himself, admitted he had some anxious moments, but added, I'm really proud of those three men up there. Weather is a news item in Houston where temperatures are expected to dip into the 20s tonight. Don't sink. Automobile Don't owners sink. are being advised Don't to put antifreeze in their cars. All right, probably should stay in here. Today's a voting day. These are horrible uh, Houston, conditions. Houston mayor, eight councilmen, four school board members, and decides upon a number of special issues. Uh, no, sports, I can see the ground now. Houston oiler Woody Campbell ended rumors and speculation yesterday by strolling into the oiler training room and putting on his uniform. He says he's in good shape after 10 months as an MP with the 1st Infantry Division in Vietnam and hopes to be in action very soon. We're working up some uh, ball scores for you. The only wow, one really close right to the ground. A score. It's Ohio State oh, there's nothing Purdue too seven. tall along the way. Uh, Houston 12, uh, right at the end of the uh, reports on Apollo 12, uh, we changed antennas. Uh, did you relay some stuff up between that and the election in Houston? If so, would you repeat it, please? Okay, yeah, I got uh, several paragraphs in there. Let me uh, Oops, too far. start over again, then I'll read it on down to where your uh, election in Houston. Uh, uh, world boy. attention is on the flight of Apollo 12. The Soviet Union hailed the crew as courageous and tossed the official Soviet news agency, reported the start of the mission, and a brief factual report in both of its Russian and foreign language reports. Okay, well, don't try this in real life. Television carried I should probably just go off, for a different airport at this an point. explanation of technical details. In West Germany, all radio and television networks carried the launch live, as did the Japanese broadcasting company. The launch is being described with such adjectives as spooky and cliffhanging. Even President Nixon, a one-time Navy man himself, admitted he had some anxious moments, but added, I'm really proud of those three men up there. And weather is a big news item in Houston, where temperatures are expected to dip into the 20s tonight, and there was a fairly heavy frost in the neighborhood last oh, night. Oh, thank goodness. And then we picked Alrighty. up the voting, which I guess you got. I see, Roger, saw Roger, an airport. You. All right. Okay. Good times. 
And I got a uh, flight plan update when you have a chance. Oh boy. Go ahead. Okay, Dick, at 3030, uh, we call for a wastewater dump, which is back to our normal uh, procedure of dumping down to 25% on that one. And at 3130, you want to start a charge on battery alpha. Over. All right. Fired up 30 30 to 25 percent battery A charge 31 30. Charge. All right. Well, let's not mess up now. Oh, nice. Bad. Oh, you're right. Soft. Uh, 12, Houston, your PCO2 sensor is uh, powered through a circuit breaker on panel 5. Uh, okay. If you haven't already Breaks. checked it, uh, would you check transducer you. pressure group 2? Main alpha brakes. circuit breaker. Don't really want parking brakes, I just want okay. brake brakes, want but alright. Alright, we have arrived at Halifax despite some serious fog, I guess. I don't see any rain droplets, and I think this plane would have rain droplets or something. Ooh, really flashiness. Don't need that, don't want to run off the runway. Uh, they're all in uh, Houston. I got a long right, gap between you. taxiways. Is it on that side or the other side? Uh, yep, this side. Okay, so having arrived at Halifax, the next destination is of course St. John's, as I'm going to be crossing the Atlantic. And the plane I will fly to St. John's is a Trident. Uh, so an interesting airliner. And that should be good. But I guess I'll leave it here as I taxi very, very slowly. Stand by and I'll find out for you. And once we find out how far out Apollo 12 is, P. Conrad having asked, I'll sign off. Let's move up a little bit here. Uh, 12 Houston, not quite halfway at 110,000 miles. Okay. So Roger. Pause it there. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.